everybody and welcome back to another episode of journaling through life home edition a very special guest today from australia sarah is the owner of naturology studio she is a naturopath and a kinesiologist sarah thank you so much for joining us today how are you how's the family thanks so much for having me christine I'm really good, despite the time we're in. Um, I'm really happy to connect with you and my family's out and about at the moment so that I've got the space to be able to talk with you um, interruption free. Uh, well, thank <laughs> you. you. <laughs> is everybody healthy? Thank goodness everybody is healthy. Um, everybody that I know of here um, in Queensland, we've been very lucky with this whole coronavirus outbreak and um the restrictions are starting to ease um i suppose compared to places like north america and um, europe it sounds like we've been let off pretty pretty lightly oh i'm so glad to hear that um yeah and even in ontario where i live it's starting to move in that direction schools are still closed everything is still closed i have family in in quebec that is the epicenter of the virus and even they have started to move to a progressive opening up of spaces right but i think it still creates a lot of anxiety in people do you find that the energy has sort of shifted now that things are starting to open up or that you're sort of past the biggest part of this yeah well what i've noticed over the time is that prior to coronavirus a lot of people were really stressed and anxious already mm. and what's happened with this lockdown is that suddenly we've had to kind of face our inner demons and all of this world that we escape through work and different things and for a lot of people that's making anxiety and stress even worse <laughs> um, but of course, with things starting to look a little bit brighter on the horizon, thank goodness, you know, there's going to be a lot of celebration and people being relieved to have a bit of a life kind of similar to what they used to have. But what I'm also seeing is that people don't necessarily want things to be how they used to be. So starting to appreciate the little things, which goes a really long way with our mental health. Absolutely. And it's, it's such a valuable point that you make. And sometimes we forget, we think now we're in this traumatic, stressed situation, but likely we were before in a, not the same, but the stress levels were probably really, really high. And now you are in a naturopath first and you were saying, you know, stressed people that you've seen before are there some of the things that you know people have sort of taken to now in terms of taking control of their mental health now that they have the time or now that they can decrease the stress levels well actually that's um a good question because what we're finding is that you know you've got all of these hours every week right you've got 168 hours per week and by not having commutes and things to work, suddenly it's like you've got extra time. But the truth is we don't have extra time. We've always only got time, right? Time is all we have. So we can now choose to use it in different ways. So I live by the sea um, at Brighton and it's just beautiful. But one of the things that I've noticed a lot is that the seafront is suddenly full of people doing exercise. So people are starting to take better control of their health by getting out and exercising which is awesome so the shift of people using their leisure time to be at home watching movies and youtube and all of those types of things suddenly isn't the leisure anymore the leisure is getting out and about and getting fresh air and sunshine and exercise which is a real foundational key for good health Oh, I just love that. Even today, it snowed. It snowed. Oh. In my, we're supposed to have spring, but you know, that's, that's Canada for you. So, you know, I, can I just vicariously live through you at the ocean and enjoy it? But I still sent my kids out. I was like, you know what? It's sunshine. You've been in the house all day because we walk to school on a regular day before this lock-in. And, you know, I personally make a, a point of experience the environment do something good for your body all the time and i found that it is something that you have to consciously do now because you're in such a routine of staying home so it's wonderful yes. to hear that people are doing that right 
Absolutely. Yeah. You've got this time now to choose healthy options. So I'd love to be out in the snow, trust me, sometimes. I'd love to be in Canada. Um, so yeah, rain, hail, shine, you know, it's, yeah, getting outdoors is super important. It's so important. Well, we can trade at some point. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, we do our house swap sometime. <laughs> It's on video now, Sarah. It's on video now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that goes for you too. We're coming. <laughs> oh, well, you are a naturopath and a kinesiologist, and you also do these presentations, correct? For people, for companies. Yes, that's right. So just recently I did a presentation on working from home and stress and anxiety and um, how to deal with that from a natural perspective, both from um, my perspective as a naturopath and kinesiologist, but also from Philip Lefopoulos' perspective as a clinical psychologist and psychotherapist. So um, I have kind of collated some of the slides that I did for that presentation to talk with yourself and the community about today. That is amazing. Now, if the community would bear with me, I'm going to do the slide share. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, so you can run us through it and tell me when you want to move the slide. And Sarah said that we can interrupt at any time if we have some questions. Thank you. Um, so, so this was just the introduction. So obviously I've been introduced already, so that's great. So I mean, one of the key areas that we're looking at now with the pandemic and the lockdown is people's response to stress. And ultimately stress, um, spikes when we feel like we don't have a control over our situations. Um, and the interesting thing about control is that, you know, throughout life, we don't actually have control over anything. It's just our perceptions of the future running a particular way it makes us feel like we've got control. So what we're looking at now is kind of letting go of that control and trusting what is um, in order to be able to let our stress response start to drop down. Uh, so this slide here, um, my friend Lindsay, she is an amazing graphics designer. She created this for me for this presentation. Um, this is basically how stress presents in men and women. So what we find is that in men and women, our stress levels tend to be very similar, but the way they present can be quite different and the way we manage them can be quite different. So a lot of men particularly seem to um, go towards doing exercise as a form of stress management, um, whereas women are more likely to reach out to their social networks and um, communicate. But what I see from a clinical perspective as a naturopath um, is on pathology results and things. So for women, their progesterone levels start to like plummet because progesterone is this beautiful hormone that keeps us kind of happy and healthy and um, our skin looking good and feeling really well. But if we are in a stress dominant cycle, um, the progesterone that would be available to us actually gets reuptaked and becomes cortisol. So suddenly our, our, our cycles might become out of whack. We might miss periods. We, um, you know, might have painful periods and things. But basically the point of this slide here is to show that there there's no one single way that stress presents in different people. Because for some people, they might just say that I'm not stressed, but underneath the surface, there's a lot more going on. But the way I present stress is going to be very different to the way that you present stress. Um, and the, mo the most important thing to know is how is it that you personally experience stress? And to maybe use this slide as a guide for, um, you know, kind of like a ticking of where, where, like what is it that you're finding stressful and how does it present in you? And if you write down all of those stresses and how they present personally, and then perhaps put them up on your bathroom mirror. And every morning you can look at the way those signs present and say, am I having any of these today? If it's a yes, well, we need to actively and consciously choose ways to downregulate that stress so that we can become healthier. So what we'll kind of go through over the 
the rest of the slides is different ways that we can help ourselves and take notes as you go along um, so that you can write down and put on the mirror as well. Here are the ways that I'm going to help myself today because the main person who's going to help me isn't Sarah the naturopath, it's actually myself. Oh, and I love that journaling is part of that, writing it down. I mean, that's our business, definitely. And one that Absolutely. caught my eye is tired but wired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So that's when you've kind of got a bit of, they call it HPA access dysfunction. So um, basically you've been running on stress for so long that your cortisol levels, while they should be high when you're dealing with stress, they've become so high for so long that your brain is starting to downregulate them. So suddenly your stress, your cortisol starts to drop and you are just, you know, you can't sleep. Everything becomes kind of out of whack. So as your body is trying to regulate to this normal. Right. That sounds like a toddler too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Um, so this slide here, basically just that um, you've got, foundational support what you can do for yourself so you can do physical and nutritional well-being which is what a lot of naturopaths and nutritionists and western herbal medicine people can speak with you about but also um, through the mind so this is where psychologists and counselors and things can really help you with cbt and um, you know exploring different conscious themes so you've got those two that really relate but foundationally underneath all of it <laughs> is how we are eating and um, what we're putting into our bodies. My number one tip for everybody <laughs> that I see come up with stress um, and all kinds of disease states is the anti-inflammatory diet. So this is the Mediterranean diet. It's basically oily fish, colorful foods, lots of vegetables, fiber, real grains, um, if you can have that foundation of good food, it, it um, encourages your body to have less inflammation, which means that your gut lining is going to be less inflamed, which means that your blood brain barrier is going to become less inflamed and your mood is going to improve. Now, one of the interesting things about inflammation is that um, we used to see inflammation as a byproduct of disease but now what we're actually seeing is that inflammation is a driver of disease and the number one way that you can support your body to have less inflammation is through what you eat so that's why you know mediterranean diets and things are so useful but <laughs> from a naturopath perspective as well we are all completely unique and completely individual so this is very blanket advice okay so if you needed specific support around what you're eating because you're already eating very well, that's where coming to see somebody like myself is really useful because some people can't actually tolerate tomatoes or legumes or avocados due to different things like histamine release. So what I like to do is here's a blanket approach, but let's give you a personalized approach for exactly what you should be eating on an individual basis. Absolutely. And, and I do love that because then it's, you know, saying that you're taking control of what you're eating, right? And you know that there is a good plan specifically for you. I love that. That's great. Oh, the anti-inflammatory guide. Yeah. So this is something that I'll um, make sure people get access to if they're interested in signing up to my newsletter. It's a great guide just as a reminder for how to eat well. And just backtracking, I think that, you know, it's so important that we see the symptoms as an underlying cause and not always jump to the conclusions of, you know, just have a drug and it'll be fine. <laughs> right? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. is, is that like seven videos later? <laughs> we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. No, please don't do that. No, like, we have to look at things holistically. So, um, yeah, there is no magic pill. Okay. So, um, eating 20 bananas a day isn't going to help or, you know, like, um, but looking at things across the board, nutrition, mental health, journaling, um, exercise, it's, it's all together, you know? Absolutely. Um, 
Nutraceuticals, people may or may not have heard of this word, but it basically just means nutritional um, compounds in kind of like a pharmaceutical style capsule or powder. Um, so these are very high dose. Um, what I really want to encourage people to understand is that vitamin C is something that shouldn't be underestimated. It is key when it comes to stress support and immune support. So um, you need it for your um, adrenals to function well and it's just it's so powerful if that's the one thing you take away from today you know get your vitamin c up right now in terms of vitamin c is it okay to just have the tablets because i mean I was actually born in Africa and I lived there for most of my life. So I totally love the avocados and the guavas and all those beautiful fruits that you cannot always get in Canada. So now living here, is it okay to take a supplement? Again, blanket approach, not everything is right for everybody, but in general. <laughs> Um, in general, absolutely. Like there are different forms of vitamin C and some are much more highly absorbed than others. Um, so what I, I mean, for people who might have a histamine problem, some types of vitamin C can cause a problem. But as a general rule, I mean, you don't have access to all of the fresh fruit and vegetables that, um, you know, we ideally would have. So yes, taking a supplement is a good thing. Excellent. Unless you've got too much iron. <laughs> so again, blanket approach, <laughs> contact a naturopath if you need personalized advice. I'm going to put a lot of disclaimers in this video. <laughs> right. Oh, Ooh, herbs. Oh, I love herbs. Um, so the great thing about herbs is that, you know, you can take them as like an alcohol type extract through your Western herbal practitioner or a naturopath. Um, but, or you can even just take them really gently in a tea, which you can get easy access to at healthcare shops. And, um, but the one that I'm seeing a lot of at the moment is andrographis. Now, andrographis is something called an adaptogen. So if you're low in a particular area, it will help to bring you up. If you're too high in a particular area, it will help to bring you down. So it's like a moderating type herb for your immune system. That is spectacular. I'm going to have to see what it looks like, the plant. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it the it balance all. plant? <laughs> uh, it's one of many, many, many adaptogens. So it's just one that's getting a lot of attention at the moment with the coronavirus outbreak. So they're using it a lot in China as part of their TCM approach to um, treating coronavirus. Right, right. That is fascinating. Now, I kind of touched on this area a little bit earlier, saying that, you know, we've got 160 hours per week. Um, the main takeaway from that is that it is our choice how we use our time. And it is so important that we're making decisions that nurture ourselves because when you nurture yourself first, you're able to nurture the other people around you more. So choose your time wisely. Have a routine that you stick to most days, not every day, because you want to mix it up a bit to have <laughs> you know, a bit of enjoyment. Um, but you know, if you're get, getting up and going to bed at the same time most days, you're going to feel a lot more balanced throughout the day. Absolutely. And I think it's that thing of um, routines create safety as well. So I think especially for children, that's what they always teach when you just have kids, right? It says don't do a schedule because schedules don't work, but have a routine, right? Within a specific time frame, obviously, that just sort of goes without saying. But I think especially now, if people are feeling unsafe, routine can be one of those things that creates safety in their minds. Absolutely. It's that whole kind of, um, you know, taking control over situations where you, things might feel out of control. At least if you've got a routine, you, you will start to kind of downregulate and feel a lot more safe. Bring it down for sure. So exercise is an interesting one. So you'll have a lot of people that exercise a lot. They'll do triathlons and uh, marathons and different things. Um, the idea with exercise from a naturopath's perspective is not to go out and train to become a triathlete or a marathon runner. Thank okay? you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
if you were to suddenly introduce extreme exercise, you're actually introducing more stress to your body. So it doesn't mean you can't do those exercises, it just means build up slowly. So half an hour to 45 minutes of walking every day does spectacular amounts for your, your immune system and your stress levels. So just getting out for a walk every day will support you. It's as easy as that. I love that. And it's good and you can hear the birds and you can connect to nature. I think there's so many additional benefits too, right? Absolutely. It's that whole coming to your senses type thing. So when you are able to do things that bring you into that present moment where you know, you're not in your head anymore and you can start to feel different parts of your body and notice different sensations and sounds and smells and tastes. Um, that's what's going to, you know, bring you much more joy and balance. Absolutely. My favourite. Oh, something I wish I could get more of right now with my two young children. Right. So, <laughs> sleep is, um, is, it's really critical for um, immune health and stress health. Um, basically, there are, there are lots of studies out there that show the more hours of sleep you get, so if you get seven plus hours of sleep per night, you are less likely to get a respir respiratory infection than people who are getting five to six hours. So the thing to keep in mind here is not so much that, um, you know, you have to get those hours of sleep because sometimes you might need help with sleep. So that can come with, you know, different herbs and the way you, you eat and your different, um, you know, your room set up with blue lights and things. But for people like myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people out there who are up with young children during the night, if you're not able to get that sleep during the night, carve out time during the day to do meditation. It is the most powerful thing that you can do for your health. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. And, and we were sort of just talking about that too. Um, we're in the coronavirus there's anxiety in children too. So just to be cognizant that their sleep patterns might be disrupted, there might be nightmares. We did a whole show on dreams in coronavirus. So it's it's fascinating, just that topic by itself, but how you know the stresses from the outside of your waking life influences your dreams and how that could affect your sleep. So it's just something to be cognizant about as well. I think for anybody who's having trouble, you know, maybe falling asleep, writing it down. Again, that journal Absolutely. idea of putting it out of your mind and then just sleeping, that has helped too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and meditation, right. Yeah, so this is just a little bit more on meditation. So, you know, meditation is just about bringing you to the present moment. So being fully present where you are right now. So not worrying about the past. One of the things that I love, well, that I heard recently about um, when you're thinking about the past is actually that worries, fears, anxieties, and you're often rewriting the past in your own head, right? So it's kind of pointless. Maybe that's a good idea to keep a journal then, because then you can just go read it and say, yeah, oh, this is what happened on that, that day. <laughs> full circle, full <Yeah>. circle. <laughs> well, so much of our thoughts are the same things every day, right? And it's kind of you know, they're rewiring our brains in certain ways and it's not actually all that helpful, you know, because that's gone now. Here is where we are. Now, when we're worrying about the future, that also, I mean, it's not a waste of time <laughs> because, you know, we're, we're human and that's the way we're built and it's how we have survived for millennia. Um, but by getting, getting caught up in planning for the future, it's also not very helpful because we often kind of predict worst case scenarios, which aren't good for our present state of health. And when we are visualizing a future that may not be helpful, our brain doesn't know whether it's happening in the present or whether it's just a thought. So when we connect with the present moment and realize that we are safe, and we are healthy, um, we are able to receive great guidance and insights from perhaps different areas of our brain that are looking to, to connect and not able to when we're caught up in all different things. So this is when you're able to find things like, you know, those light bulb moments often come when you're very present in the current moment. 
Absolutely. I, I also think of those shower thoughts, right? When you're just like letting everything go and you're like shower thoughts, they should do a journal for when you're in the shower, a waterproof version. <laughs> but yes, that would be awesome. Light bulb moments. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, this word here, it's just, it's such a good one. Psychoneuroimmunology. <laughs> Basically, this just means that our, um, our thoughts affect how we feel, but they also interact with us on a hormonal level, which also interacts with us on an immuno level. So when we are having positive thoughts that bring us um, calm, that interacts with our cortisol response, which interacts with our immune system, and basically means that the whole idea is that what we think can create our reality based on the fact that if you're thinking bad thoughts, you're going to be more stressed and you're more likely to get sick. If you're thinking good thoughts, you're more likely to be calm and you're more likely to be healthy. Right. It's, it sounds almost like a chicken and the egg situation. It's also interlinked that the one goes to the other, to the other, to the other. That's why it's important to have that holistic view on everything, right? Absolutely. And, um, you know, for some of us, we think, okay, I'm stressed or I'm angry or I'm, you know, you, you've got these blank emotions, right? So this is where kind of speaking about our emotions with more vocabulary it helps us to move things out of our subconscious into our conscious for understanding in order to be able to let them go and be more present. Oh, I like that. And we'll go into that a little bit more because that's one of my favorite things as a kinesiologist is digging beneath the surface. So um, what we do as kinesiologists is, you know, if you come in and, and you meet with somebody like myself, we might look at different acupressure points on your body, which are linked to different organs, which are believed to hold different emotions. And each emotion has a vibrational kind of frequency and allows us, um, for, I suppose, more vocabulary for what's going on. So, for instance, in the liver, a lot of people may know or they may not know, but the liver is seen as kind of the, the organ of anger, but there is a lot more than anger that's going on. So it could be resentment or um, frustration or um, deception. Like the, there are so many different emotions underneath the surface that are trying to present themselves, often through our physical body, but we're just not able to understand the language that our body is speaking to us in in a conscious manner this is where seeing a kinesiologist helps to bring it into your conscious awareness so that you can start to heal i just love that and and i'm so happy because i i hammered this down to this subject to say that no emotion is a bad emotion like there's so much like negative like don't feel that don't feel that don't feel that and i'm like but you're suppressing what your body is trying to tell you it's just a messenger emotion right so it's amazing that you can then move it out and see what the message is in order to heal that's, that's that amazing. is right like that's the number one probably number one thing that people have with their emotions is judging it and saying this is a bad emotion i shouldn't feel that like my you know i saw somebody else act in that way so therefore i can't act in that way when actually if you just said okay i am actually like i am not an angry person but i am feeling anger or whatever it is that you might be feeling it kind of takes away that um that judgment and negativity and allows you to just sit with it mm -hmm. so that you can connect with it and let it go and it also takes away the intensity of it, right? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so this is just a little bit more about how having that emotional vocabulary allows us to have a richer experience of life. Right. I like preventing the emotional shutdown because I think that is something that people are dealing with now too. They might have too many emotions going on. So, you know. That's right. I shut down. <laughs> just take it one at a time. <laughs> this is a really interesting one and one that i'll include with um, anybody who signs up to the newsletter so behind anger is actually a whole host of different emotions that might be coming through so if somebody's acting angry or if you're feeling angry have a think about what might actually be behind that is it hurt is it guilt is it confusion because once you can get in touch with that you can start to again take the layers down absolutely 
I like the outrage at injustice. I like to hug trees. It's always on my mind. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And this one here is just another really useful wheel. It's called the feelings wheel. So, you know, you might be, again, I'm just going to use the angry word because it's, it's so much, many things that can be behind it. But anger, could you could be feeling let down. And why are you feeling let down? Well, you could feel betrayed or you could have felt resent towards somebody or from somebody. Um, so this is just another useful guide that allows people to open up their emotions and understand what's going on. And I like that even just to bring it back to when you write it down, instead of just saying, I'm angry, use this wheel and see what are you actually, you know, Absolutely. where does it lead to like write it down, do a, a vocab on it. I love it. Yes. And, and another one. So this is very, I mean, it's not completely similar, but it just gives us more of, um, I suppose, a way of looking at our emotions again and, and where they might be coming from. Absolutely. And it looks sort of like the, oh, not a hundred percent, but the chakras. I was like, it has all the colors, the rainbow colors. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I love chakras <laughs> and delving into those and the emotions that might be going on behind them. Right, right. Oh, this is so nice. um yeah so this is just some mental health strategies so you might find that you're in a leader position leadership position whether that's at work or as part of your family or friend circle or social circle the best thing that you can really do is always by leading by example so again reinforcing that self-care comes first okay so we have to trust the people around us that they're going to be doing the right things by themselves and by you. So by trusting other people, you're empowering them to, um, you know, support themselves. That's um, there, and there's an interesting thing here called toxic positivity that Philip, the psychologist, he's very much interested in that when somebody is anxious or unhappy, it can sometimes be very unhelpful to just say, oh, everything's going to be fine. Because yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, because that really dismisses how that person is feeling. Absolutely. So just to be there and say, okay, I hear what you're saying and it's okay to feel like that is really useful. And I love that because it's a boundary too, right? It gives them the autonomy to deal with it without you being the rescuer for it and i completely agree it's that you know every time you go on a social media and it's all this happy 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 and it has that you're like that's not real life real life doesn't work that way that's so true social media can be very very um stressful for some people because it's like how can everybody else be so happy but i'm not and just saying well actually that's not the real world no, and it's one picture. And now nobody can travel anyway, so nobody can post pictures of their vacations. <laughs> True. Sorry, people. <laughs> this is useful just for if you're feeling anxious. Um, so you could write this down in your journals, for instance, you know, that this feeling won't last forever. Um, all of these things here, they're just, it's just a useful guide again for, for how to help yourself when you're feeling anxious. And I think that's so beautiful. The, the temporary status that we are all in, right? To know that this is not going to last forever. <laughs> it's not going to last forever, definitely. So, oh. um, and this is the last slide. So a couple of things that I probably didn't mention through the presentation is, you know, if you're feeling anxious, grounding, and deep breathing are some of the best things you can do. So get outside, get your shoes off if it's not too cold and <laughs> um, get your feet on the earth. Something that I do for a lot of people all over the world is I create Australian bushflower essences. Okay. And I actually line these up with the different chakras. So emotions that might be happening with, um, I'll bring right, it up again. Show us again. <laughs> So I've been taking this one today. It's for the throat chakra. It's, um, I took this because I was feeling a little bit anxious about the talk and being on camera. Um, so I took this to be able to communicate easily and, um, and it helps to manage with anxiety as well. I think not just the emotional aspects and energetic aspects of the flower essences, but the physical act of taking something and and I suppose getting in touch with that present moment again. 
Now, I know in North America, you may have something called desert flowers um, that we use in kinesiology here. So for the American population, desert flower alchemy is quite good. In the UK and Europe, they use bark flowers. And of course, here in Australia, we use Australian bush flowers. So um, if you have a look at my website, there's so many different emotions that they can help with. And um, I suppose right now I've got a special on for um, just helping people during this time to be able to give them emotional support through flower essences. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, do you actually ship them? I know some of the borders are closed at the present time. <laughs> Is that something like if not today, maybe in future people can buy off your website and you ship internationally? Absolutely. Yeah, I've shipped them to the UK and Europe and America. And um, I mean, obviously most of my clients are in Australia, but yeah, I do ship them worldwide. Oh, that's wonderful. So I will put all of the links in the description below so people can, you know, take a look at your website. There's so much beautiful information. And Maybe a part of that too is taking the essences, is getting back to our true selves, back to the basics, back to nature, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. And that's what I'm all about, getting in touch with nature, because that's what we are. We're, we're all natural beings living in a sometimes very unnatural world and you can get back in touch with nature. And that present moment, you just, you know, you're going to feel so much better. Absolutely. And now, is there a way for people to reach you now? I know it's not as easy to see people because of the self-isolation, but can they reach you for the newsletter? We'll put that in as well, but for consultations or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I suppose one of the great things right now that um, during this lockdown is that suddenly the option to connect with people all over the world has really become quite easy. So I, I am offering um, naturopathy consultations um, via Skype and Zoom and FaceTime to anybody who's interested all over the world. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you for your time. I hope you get to enjoy some of the sunshine, the vitamin D, right? <laughs> yes, 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 vitamin D for sure. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. And we will chat to you again soon. <laughs> Thanks so much, Christine. Would you like a free food journal? Head over to journalingthrough.life. We also have a premium journal for holistic alignment. To live a life full of passion, happiness, and self-love. Keep journaling and keep growing.